Amon Reina here from Sage Investors, and I'm here to do a quick mind map analysis of my decision to buy shares in Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. This video can also be available, is also available uh, via podcast, uh, either by downloading it through my website, sageinvestors.ca, or through Apple Podcasts. Now, every time I'm considering or evaluating a company or evaluating a stock that I'm interested in investing in, I always ask myself the same series of questions. And after I answer these questions, I usually have a pretty good idea of whether I want to buy the stock or if I want to not buy the stock. And so what I'm going to do here is walk through the series of questions that I ask as it pertains to Amazon. So the first question I always ask when I'm looking at a company is, is what do they sell? What what do they sell in the way of products and or services? What is their value proposition? What makes them unique compared to other companies? So when we look at Amazon, the question we ask ourselves is what do they sell? Well, essentially Amazon is a, hold on, uh, at, at face value, uh, Amazon is essentially a website, uh, an e-commerce website. Uh, e-commerce retail website. When Amazon was founded, it was they basically just sold books, and obviously now today they sell a lot more than books. They're essentially a, a, a typical bricks and mortar retail establishment, but they're on site, online. That's if you look at the company at face value. Now, from my perspective, from what I can see, um, Amazon is really not so much a retail company, but it's more of a logistics company. I, I look at it more as being a logistics company where their value proposition is really helping people or companies um, get stuff, get products and services, um, either cheaply, uh, more efficiently, faster, um, they are sort of the enabler. They, they, I view them as, 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 as an enabling company that allow consumers, allow companies to get things. Um, if you want to look at the numbers from a retail perspective, they're considered the considered really the best of breed re to online retailer. They have about 50% of online sales go through Amazon. Um, overall, they represent about 5% of total retail sales in the US. Um, so retail, uh, retailing is, is one aspect of it too. Um, the other thing about Amazon too is it's not just the retail, they have all kind of, they have their hands in all kinds of different um, sectors, industries uh, from that perspective. They are now getting more and more into the food space through the Whole, Whole Foods acquisition. They're trying to build a presence and being kind of a dominant online food uh, retailer. Uh, they're also essentially a website host. Um, they have a segment called the Amazon Web Services, which basically hosts uh, company uh, sites, and uh, you know, data. They're essentially a data cloud-based uh, services, all kinds of cloud-based services, kind of turnkey cloud-based solutions. Um, that's another uh, big segment out of the out of the company's business. Um, those are some of the the big areas right now uh, that you know that jump out with the company. So that's that's Amazon. Um, the next question that you ask, that I ask then is, okay, who, this is what the company is, is what they do, is what they sell. Who are their competition? Is there any competition? Uh, who, are the, who are the other companies that could, that could uh, take a chunk out of this company? Um, so as I said, um, Amazon really, their web you know, is cast across all kinds of different areas, all kinds of uh, industries. So they have a whole variety of different competitors. Um, one particular competitor would be Facebook and Google in terms of uh, advertising. One thing I didn't mention that Amazon also does is they uh, 
their website is also a marketplace. They have a marketplace services where other companies sell, can sell their products and services through Amazon. And so what Amazon can do is one of the features Amazon has built over the years is built a search service within their website. And so they can charge um, companies that want to be to want to market their services and products through Amazon, they can charge them and, and almost in a similar way as Google charges people to, uh, to who want to be guaranteed a higher placing in their in their search engine. So this is an area that's also getting quite a bit of uh, growth within the company. So advertising, uh, Facebook and Google are definite competitors with them. I would say also Apple in the sense of uh, the whole mobile space um, and also the entertainment space, which I'll get into in a sec. Um, Walmart definitely is their one of their main competitors in terms of the retail uh, retail space, uh, and especially in the grocery area. Um, then we have, uh, what was the other one, Walmart Retail. As I said, uh, a lot of the companies, Amazon's business is in the cloud web hosting area, so I would then also say Microsoft and uh, Oracle would be uh, another uh, major competitor. And then I would say also uh, Netflix and Disney would be another player in terms of entertainment. Another um, area that Amazon is trying to aggressively get into is in the whole streaming area in terms of uh, entertainment and streaming. They uh, Within their Amazon Prime uh, ecosystem, they have uh, a, a, a very rich and robust streaming service in terms of movies, shows, uh, and music. So that's another thing. So as you can see, Amazon is 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 a very big company, a very huge company, and a very and and, and essentially they're competing against everybody. And so in a lot of ways, when I look at Amazon, I would kind of view as Amazon as be like a, in a way a traditional conglomerate. So those are the competition. Now the next question that I ask is who who are their customers? Who buys things or buys services from from Amazon? Uh, from this perspective, I would say their main customers are are essentially anybody. Um, anyone, I would say their businesses are basically consumers. From the retail perspective, I think they're corporations, um, businesses. From a hosting perspective, um, I would say uh, from hosting and as well as the whole marketplace uh, model that they have. And, uh, and content creators, people who are creating content creators in terms of uh, entertainment and media. Those would be, to me, the main core kind of customer base that would, uh, would be interested in doing business with Amazon. The question that we have to ask also is, okay, these are all the people that are, are buying stuff from Amazon now. Do they buy stuff once in a while or are these frequent customers? Do they come back? Because ultimately, we want to invest in, in businesses that have consistent uh, recurring sales. Because if they have recurring sales, it means cash flows are consistent and the company's sustainability and opportunities to generate profits are going to be higher. So when we look at Amazon's ability to retain customers, um, it's very strong. And one of the things Amazon's done that's very quite unique is essentially just adopt this whole uh, ecosystem model where they try to essentially have created an environment that encourages people to stay within it to consume more. Um, and the big way they've done that is through a couple of ways, which is through their prime program, is through incentives. They've, they've, they crank out a lot of different incentives to convince people to spend obviously with Amazon, but also to stay within their ecosystem. 
And so the two big ways they've done that is through their Prime service, which is basically paying a flat fee for, you know, faster shipping, lower costs, access to a lot of other perks, benefits, like their streaming services, their cloud services. Um, that's been a big factor in keeping in, in, in keeping businesses. And then it's also the other area where they're looking at, which is sort of the um, Internet of Things concept when we're talking about the whole Alexa uh, model where essentially they want to use hardware um, and artificial intelligence to build databases of, of their customers and use them to get them to kind of automate a lot of their behavior and in terms of purchasing things. And once they get them to automate that behavior, skew them towards purchasing things through Amazon. So the whole concept of incentives and developing an ecosystem has been really the mechanism that Amazon has used to keep customers. And it's very unique and it's been very powerful. So, so far, we've got a bit of an idea what the company does. We've known the company's got quite a bit of competition. Um, they're quite dominant in the whole online marketing place. Um, and they've got a consumer base where they have done a really, really good job of keeping people within their, dom their ecosystem and encouraging them through incentives to stay within that ecosystem. Seem like all pretty, pretty cool things. So, but at the end of the day, we're investors. And the next question we have to ask ourselves as investors is, do they actually make money? Because that's why we, we're investors and we want to invest in companies that are, have the ability to create profits. So when we look at Amazon, historically, they have not been about profits. They have been about selling things and then reinvesting things, basically reinvesting all their sales and cash flows back into the business. The CEO, Jeff Bezos, believes in, in scale and size and has historically not believed in profit. But at the end of the day, and, and Wall Street and Bay Street have kind of gone along with it um, and have continued to bid the stock price up. So, but that's been changing quite a bit. And I think a lot of it has to do with how they are now generating a lot of that cash flow. A lot of that cash flow is now coming through um, the AWS platform. A lot of it is now starting to come through their advertising platform. Um, the mechanism in which they are generating cash flow and revenues and profits has, is evolving quite significantly. Um, so when I took a look at uh, Amazon's, uh, when I look at a company, one of the things I wanna focus on is the company's return on invested capital. Um, rel in relation to the company's cost of capital. Com so what I'm talking about is the company's economic profit. And ultimately, um, strong, well-run, well-managed companies have a great ability to generate consistent, positive economic profit. So when I looked at Amazon, um, the return on invested capital over the last two, three years has come in between 20 and 22%. Their cost of capital, the weighted average cost of capital is coming in at about 9%. So this is a company that's definitely creating consistent economic profit. Um, revenues and profits in the most recent years have been growing at about a 20% clip. As I said before, they own, in terms of market share, about 50% of the online sales uh, is going through Amazon. They represent about 5% of total sales in the US. So they are definite players. Um, if you just broke it down, the big really money maker is the AWS. Represents about 59% of total sales. So a lot of people think, you know, Amazon in terms of retail, um, really it's actually the cloud services, web hosting services is really what drives it. The retail side is basically just a loss leader. And so that's why I say, I said at the outside, you know, on face value, people view Amazon to be just an e-commerce retail website. The reality is I think they're more about logistics. This is a company that is believes in establishing 
processes and procedures and mechanisms to allow people to get products and services that they want. And they just so happen to be selling retail. That's how I view it. Um, what else? So from my perspective, Amazon definitely is, is a much more profitable company now. And from everything that the way the company is growing, um, it could be an even more profitable company in the future. And so this leads to the next question we ask is, okay, um, from a financial performance perspective, that's great, but what is the, how strong is this company financially? In other words, is this company gonna be around um, in six months or six years? Um, what we really wanna look at is the company's balance sheet. In what condition is the balance sheet? How strong is the company's balance sheet? So when I'm looking at a balance sheet, I try to look at it from really three different viewpoints or three different perspectives. And one perspective is liquidity. In terms of does the company have enough cash and generate enough cash flow to cover their day-to-day -day obligations? Um, the company currently has about $68 billion in cash. And it has essentially more cash than long-term debt, which to me is a really sign of a really strong company. If you got, and essentially the company could retire its debt tomorrow uh, and have a lot of money to spare. So that's a good sign that I like to see with uh, with a business strong liquidity. Next thing I want to look at is their debt level. How much debt do they have, and how much, and are they in a position to um, manage that debt? Uh, when I kind of look at a company's debt, one of my go-to ratios is the debt equity. And so for Amazon, it's about 0.66, which is pretty high. Um, but again, going back to the fact that this company has so much more, a lot more cash versus long-term debt, it can manage this pretty, it's more than capable of managing this uh, debt load quite effectively. And then the final thing I want to look at is uh, quality of assets. So what I'm looking at is the composition of the company's assets in terms of goodwill and tangible assets. Ultimately, we want to buy companies that have low goodwill and low, have a lot of high quality assets. And so um, when I looked at the company's goodwill and intangibles, um, make up about 7% of total assets, which is really, really good. So a lot, basically 93% of the company's assets are hardcore, strong, tangible assets. And that's ultimately what we wanna have is companies with strong balance sheets. So from that perspective, Amazon's definitely in a pretty good financial position. Now that leads to, so far, like so far, you know, the story so far seems to be pretty good, but as investors, we always have to look at the risks that are associated with the with with the investment with the company. Are there is there anything out there that could take this company down a notch? And uh, there's a few things that are, from a risk perspective, are things that we need to keep in mind when we're looking at Amazon. Uh, one thing that I said before, which is um, is a lot of the revenues and a lot of the cash flow is being driven by the AWS segment. So. From that perspective, um, one of the risks is, are they too dependent on AWS? The fact of the matter is, as I said, as I identified earlier, is Microsoft has been making a lot of inroads into the cloud hosting area. So if they continue to do that and take away some share from Amazon, that could pose a, a bit of a risk for the, for the company. Um, the other area is, as I said, um, you know, the, the company is in so many different segments now that, you know, in a way they're very much a conglomerate. So the potential risk is, is, are, are, are they in too many areas? Um, are they spreading themselves too thin? That's another area. Like when you look at it, they're in drugs. I, that's another area to even talk about is they're trying to get into the whole pharmaceutical side of it. They're into real estate. They just actually did a deal with uh, a, real, a real estate website to kind of see, kind of hook up um, real estate people who are looking to buy houses and stuff like that, maybe down the road considering buying a house through Amazon. Um, they're in a lot of different spaces and a lot of different areas. And so the potential is them to really uh, spread themselves too thin. Um, 
Another risk is is just hubris. Um, the CEO, um, his mindset is very much about disruption. He is not hesitant to enter into areas where they may not be the most uh, strongest from a competency perspective. Um, but he is willing to go into areas and explore rolling the dice and going into areas where they may not have as much experience and challenging a lot of the establishment. Um, so there's so ego. And so chances are um, there's a risk there that he might take the company into areas which may not be really fruitful and may not have positive outcomes. Um, and that kind of leads again into this whole um, are they in too many areas concept. Ego, I think, is a concept that could take this company down a few notches. And finally, the other risk profile I think that's really, I think, got me interested in looking at the company was is the regulatory. Um, regulatory component. A lot of room, a lot of chatter now out there, uh, especially in the U.S., with uh, the government wanting to, starting to look at Amazon as a company that is potentially, you know, almost like a monopoly and maybe it might be worth breaking up the company um, I, I read a few quotes from I believe it was the Commerce Secretary or the Treasury Secretary talking about Amazon has essentially almost destroyed the whole retail landscape and has driven so many companies out of business um, that it might be uh, uh, there might be an antitrust issue with the company and so the microscope now is being focused on Amazon a lot more, as well as some other Silicon Valley technology companies too. Um, but Amazon is now catching the eye of, of regulators, and it could potentially um, be um, taken down a few notches by regulatory concepts. Um, a lot of people are talking about um, splitting up AWS because it is such a lucrative part of the business, maybe just splitting that segment off of the company um, may be a logical thing to happen. So there's definitely a regulatory risk. And I definitely, I think it's been a factor, and I think that has taken the stock down a bit and got me interested in looking at the company um, as a possible investment opportunity at this point. So those are some of the risks. And then really at the end of the day, it comes down to value. Is the stock cheap? If we're really happy with the story that they are telling and the performance that they are generating, and we're comfortable with their ability to manage their risks that are on the horizon, we have to ask ourselves ultimately, is this a stock cheap? Is a stock selling for a price that where there is potential upside to make money off of it? And so there's different ways to look at that. One particular way, um, what really got me interested is stock was basically trading in the 2000s. Uh, and it fell down to the 1930 level. And that kind of got me interested. And this is really what got me interested in try trying to take a bit of a loop and uh, take a bit of a dive and trying to figure it out. From a relative valuation, when if you compare the company to other companies, it's trading at a forward PE of 25. Um, the median in of online retailers is about 38. Uh, if you look at other companies like Facebook, traded about 21. Twitter is about 45. So from a retail perspective, I would say it's um, almost fairly priced, slightly maybe expensive from that side of it. From a discounted cash flow perspective, when we're looking at the company's potential cash flow generating power, um, I've seen valuations on the stock come in between 2000 and 2500 So the fact that the company is trading at about 1930 stocks potentially could be between 2000 and 2500 there seems to be some upside potential on it. As I said, the stock has been kind of languishing because of this threat of possible regulatory uh, the regulators kind of getting in, getting involved with the business and maybe potentially splitting it up. So what I did, so at the end of the day, I looked at all this stuff and it came down to really some ideas that I think the, the, the stock could be dead money. One way to look at it is the stock could be dead money because of the regulatory overhang. 
the other way we could, I, I thought I looked at it more is even if it goes down that po point and the regulars kind of force the company to split things up, from what I know, understand about spinoffs, the company could take two points. They could be forced to split up the company or they could voluntarily do it themselves. And from my experience with understanding uh, spinoffs, spinoffs tend to be put tend to be good for stock prices. And so there's a potential there for Amazon to actually increase in value if they went off and said they were going to spin off all their businesses into separate companies and maybe shrink the company in that sense. Um, so there's two ways to look at Amazon. You can look at it as from a profit perspective, and it seems like the company is definitely uh, in a road now to generate consistent tangible profits but the other way you look at i'm looking at amazon i think is really more as a potential asset play where they could spin off the company aws they could spin off the retail and basically become a smaller company but increase the value of the stock, a lot of common, you know, tenet of, of investing is uh, uh, a company. Actually, the parts of a company could actually be worth more than the entire uh, company itself. And so, potentially, and this is this this is where I, I, I when I think about Amazon, I think of Amazon as really becoming a big conglomerate. Um, that if the conglomerate got split up, it potentially could be worth a lot more than the way it's structured right now. So. I looked at it and I go, okay, the stock is fairly priced. It's definitely undervalued from an intrinsic value perspective. The stock might hang around where it is, or it might actually get cheaper if the regulatory drum beats get louder. But if the company were to proactively look at spin off, spinning off some of their main core assets into other separate standalone businesses, the value potentially of the stock and the value of the companies within it could potentially be a lot higher than the way it is set up right now. And so when I looked at that, I, to me, I thought this might be an interesting moment to, to enter the stock. And that's essentially, um, and the only way you can do that is to essentially view it as an asset play. So when I took all these factors in together, it's a dominant best of breed online retailer it's just become one of the dominant logistics companies on the planet it generates incredible amounts of economic profit strong balance sheet it seems to be actually cheaper at this point um, so when i put all these elements together it ultimately led to my decision to buy the stock so there you go that's my analysis of amazon as I said, this video is available in podcast format. You can download it at my website, sageinvestors.ca, as well as through Apple Podcasts. You can also check out some of my other mind map videos that I've made on other companies that I've evaluated and analyzed, and some of them I ultimately bought into. You can also check them out through my uh, website, sageinvestors.ca. Uh, through my website, you can also, if you're interested in more information about the courses that I teach, the investing courses that I teach, as well as my other coaching services, you can also, again, give me a shout through my website, sageinvestors.ca. So this has been my mind map analysis of my decision to buy Amazon. My name is Amon Reina. I'm an investment coach of Sage Investors, and we'll catch you again another time. Bye-bye.